Hi everyone, Nisha Manon here, director of Mikasu Foods and uh, founder of Jack and Chill. As you know, social media has become really, really important these days. If you are running a business, it has become very, very important because it helps you boost your online presence and on a very small budget. So today I am really excited to be joined by an amazing speaker who I would say is a marketing guru in one word. And she has over 15 years of experience with uh, corporate companies like PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, Muller Dairy, and uh, many more. And now what she's doing is she's supporting other businesses as a consultant in their marketing and social media strategy as well. So she's a founder and director of uh, Marketing Strategizer. We'll uh, get to know more from her in a minute or so. So what I will do is I'll just quickly go through just a few questions, which all small businesses have in mind. So we know how to boost our social media for our business and how to get our online presence more as well. So welcome to our uh, YouTube video, uh, Sasha. I'm really, really pleased to have you on board. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to have you today. So do you want to just give a quick intro about yourself and your experience in marketing. Yeah, of course, I'd say uh, thank you so much for having me on. It's um, great to um, be on this and your sh channel and uh, have the opportunity to talk in front of your uh, audience. So that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I specialize in marketing and social media for food and drink entrepreneurs. Um, as Nisha mentioned, I spent over 15 years in the corporate world working in marketing and NPD or mainly on food and drink brands um, and yeah now I, I then took a career break um, and then um, now I, um, I work as a consultant uh, working with food and drink entrepreneurs mainly um, so and that's mainly either consulting on a one-to-one -one level or I do group sort of coaching and group programs uh, and I also run a free community on Facebook for any startups that need help with social media so yeah so um, I'm looking forward to answering any questions you've got today. Yeah, sure. So I think the first and foremost question that, uh, you know, you might have heard this a lot as well. So what are the social media platforms Like you've got Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, and you know, you've got many platforms. So as a small business, what are the platforms that we should be on? Right, well, the first thing is, it depends on what your business is. So if you're selling consumer products, then you're most likely to want to be on Facebook and Instagram. But if you're serving B2B services, then, then you may want to look at LinkedIn and possibly Twitter. But generally, I think probably for your audience, it's probably mainly Facebook and um, Instagram, I would say. Uh, I mean, clearly there are other platforms. And if your products are particularly aimed at a younger audience, then you may want to look at things like TikTok and other things. But generally, um, they are the best ones for consumer brands. And the other thing I would say about that, this as well, in, in the general context of using platforms, is it's better to do one or two platforms really well, rather than trying to be on four or five platforms and do quite a bad job because you just don't have time to manage it all. So my, my best advice on this is to focus on one or two and do them really well. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, especially for me, from the experience of running this food business, I was not an Instagram person at all. I just used to put everything on Facebook until... I think it's only until I launched Jack and Chill when people started telling me I have to get it on Instagram because it's more photos and, you know, drooling yeah. pictures and you have to make people tempt with your food. So I forced myself to start up an Instagram account and TikTok, like you say, not yet there, but it is getting really trendy these days. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I think it depends on your brand and if you've got a brand that fits with that. And I mean, that's the, with the Instagram, as I said, it's a very visual platform. So, I mean, you've got to bear that in mind if you're going to be on there is you've got to ha have access or be able to create a lot of visual content. If you don't have access to that, then it might not be the easiest platform for you to be on because it's all about visuals on there, uh, which is why I say sometimes for B2B businesses, it's not so important. Um, it's not normally their platform of choice. But I mean, saying that though, there are some that are very successful on there. So yeah, uh, yeah. no set rule on this. Uh, and really, it, at the end of the day, it boils down to your target audience. So you've got to really understand your target audience and find out which platforms they're mainly on, and then focus on those really. And it's probably likely to be Facebook and Instagram. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think for B2B, LinkedIn is more the one which uh, yeah. they on. I mean, LinkedIn is, is um, generally, unless you're a big company, LinkedIn is better if you're doing it off your personal profile. So you as the founder of your business and you posting from there. Now, I also advise people to always have a business page on there, but you, the problem with the business page, it just does not get the traction that uh, your personal profile gets. 
so I use it more for just um it's basically showcasing your brand and having some key information there and a link to your website and things so people can see like what your brand is and see it's a real brand um but I wouldn't get too worried about posting a lot on there unless you've got a team of people that can help push the post because that's how why big corporates are successful on there because they have a whole team of staff and then yeah. every time they do something they get the staff to post out on their personal profiles and that's yeah. how they build up to having so many followers on there it's very hard if you're just one person or a small team uh, trying to run a business profile and LinkedIn you just don't get the the um exposure that you need in the reach of course so uh, if you are going to go on there and I think it's a definitely a good platform particularly to build relationships with people or finding you know um buyers and <laughs> buyers and things like that and getting helping you to get new listings and or collaborations with other brands then um you know it's definitely a good one to be on there but post as yourself rather than from your business page because you'll probably find it you get it's pretty dead if you do it off your business page yeah okay so how do we find our target audience on social media if somebody is just starting up <laughs> yeah no well this is a good question i think um before you start trying to find them on social media, the, the key thing is to actually understand your target audience before you start going on to social media, which is a fundamental of marketing generally. So you need to go, if you haven't done this, like go into a really in-depth sort of like, who is your target audience? So it's more than just going like they're female and um, about age 50 or whatever it might be. Um, when I say this, this is about everything, uh, more details about their demographics. Um, it, it's about like their lifestyle, you know, what they do, their hobbies, what their job is like. And then then you come on to the actual the platform usage and then which platforms they use when they're on them and that sort of thing. And then the, the other key thing that a lot of people don't really think about when they're thinking about their target audiences is, is what are their pain points? What are their problems and issues? Obviously, that bearing in mind what your product could solve for them. And so you have to think about all of that and create like what I call a um yeah. And then I normally recommend you do two or three of those to target different audiences, because when you have a product, you're not going to just have one type of person. So, you know, you could have like um, a mother that cooks for her children, uh, a retired person that's cooking and like wanting the same product. You know, you target like try and identify three different types of people, uh, very different sort of lifestyles. And then after that, you can then go out once you've created this and you're quite clear on your target audience, then go out and start a like finding that type of person on social media and trying to connect with them or going to connect into Facebook groups where those people might hang out. It's, it's sort of just finding those people. And a lot of the time when you're first starting out, you'll probably have to go and follow some of these people um, and then they'll record to your brand and then start um, potentially following you as well. Of course. Um, but it, there's a bit of a process to it. You've got to like really understand your brand before you start trying to find them on social media. And if you're wondering like, how do I work out who my my target consumers have a think about if you've already got some existing business like who's already bought your business you could even profile it on a real person for example if you know someone or you've got a neighbor or someone like that um, the more real you can make the person the better you can give them a name and everything you can just create a fictitious person but base it off someone real I think that's probably the way I find is the easiest way to do it because then you can really identify with someone and I'm not yeah. saying that like, every single person is going to be like that person but I think it's easier when you're writing content and doing social media if you feel like you're talking to a real person so if you have this person in your head when you're writing content then you can feel like you're writing something that's aimed at them exactly um, and it relates yeah, that, that, to them directly as well. yeah so that's really the idea behind um doing it so you really create something that's really in depth and when i say things like you might like why you might think why do i need to know what their job is or things like that but i mean that that a lot of that determines like what platforms you might be using if they're like um, bit, uh, a senior director or a big uh, person in a big company you may actually want to be on LinkedIn because of you know if, if that's the audience because they probably don't spend a lot of time browsing on Instagram whereas or if TikTok. you're um, <laughs> no I'm not so I'm, yeah I, I mean I'm not saying there aren't people that do but you know it, it's like helping you find where your audience is and likewise if you have a very premium products or you aim products at the corporate gifting market or something like that then you may want to be on LinkedIn because that's where yeah. your target buyer is going to be or your audience. So you, it's, it's really important to do this to understand. And likewise with the hobbies, that will help you with potentially like what Facebook groups you might want to join that, that you can then connect with those type of people. Yeah. Um, you know, what other relevant accounts you might want to work with or influencers or collaborate with other brands. Because if sure. you're a, 
a foodie brand, but you have a quite a big thing about travel or something, you might want to try and collaborate in the future with a travel brand or something or, or a travel blogger or something like that. So it's really key to sort of understand like what their interests are, because it can help you um, particularly as well further down the line when you um, start thinking about content pillars, because uh, the one thing you don't want to do is just talk about your brand and what you sell all the time. You don't want to have all the posts about selling. So Got you it. want to have other things that are relevant to your audience. And that's when we start talking about things like content pillars. And, you know, so if you're a feed brand, if if what you do is got a lot to do with travel, uh, travel could be one of your content pillars, for example. Yeah, yeah. I think that has brought me to the next question, because obviously <laughs> you decide your target audience. So what what is the content? You know, what do I post, uh, you know, on social media or Instagram or anything? So that was a next question, actually. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so, do, yeah. <laughs> so yes, being content pillars, I think um, based, as I said, once you've identified some of your typical target audience from doing these um, client avatars, then have a think about what content would be relevant to them. And I would focus on about, say, three or four pillars outside of obviously specifically talking about your products or, or you know, how your products are made and things, and then have them narrated. So if, say, for example, I just talked about a, a brand that might be relevant to travel. Now, for example, if you're a health, if you're a healthy brand, healthy food brand, then like health would be a topic, for example. So I think you've got to have a think about what's relevant to your audience, or uh, and and then then pick up topics that might be really interest. Like for example, if you're doing B two B and you're talking a lot with small business owners, then you might want to do more things about entrepreneurism. Entrepreneurism. Um, so, you know, it sort of depends what your business is and who you're aiming it at as to what topics that would be. Yeah, um, I think you made a valid point saying that it should not always be sell, 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 you know, selling your product. It should, I think it should be more about your brand ethos and the story behind the brand, the founder of the brand. So these are the kind of things that, you know, like so that people can connect directly to your brand, which is uh, what you're right, rightly yes, saying. Yes, and I mean, and that's a really good point because that is what, especially when you're dealing with startup businesses and smaller brands that's what makes you stand out from a big corporate brand who obviously exactly. can pay their way to get in front of consumers but they normally are you know most of them are manufactured in a like a factory somewhere there's no story to them or anything like that the products whereas you as the founder you have a story to tell like why you launched it why you're passionate about what you do and these are some of the best posts that you can do on social media about like your story and why you do it. And you can yeah. do this in different formats, obviously, like written, video, different ways of doing it. But, um, you know, I think this is what you have to bring through. And when I say that, it's, it can be more than just like talking to you as the founder about how you started up. It can be, you know, if you've got certain ingredients where you source them, you could get, you could have um, a talk all about the, the actual ingredients you source and where you get them from and, and obviously, if they're sustainable and things like that, or they're fair Correct. trade, you know, then you can have lots of topics on that. Um, and, you know, and then you can do behind the scenes. If you have got some staff working with you, you can do yeah. like who they are. Like, you know, if you've got a customer service rep or someone who does the social media behind the scenes, or you've got someone who places the orders for you, you know, whatever. You can also, in you know, just do a little like welcome them on, on your social media and just yeah. show their face. It just makes yeah. you more human as a as a business and a brand. If if people like know the people behind the brand, and people it. like that, and that's often what people buy into. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now we've got the content ready, and you know the audience ready. So now we are ready to post. So how yeah. do we decide what's the best time to post, or how do we? Or is it just trial and error that we do? Is it? Well, I think um, to start with, ha have a think about which is why uh, everything sort of stems back to your target audience. Have a think about your target audience now. If you're, say, targeting people that are going to, to normally be working in an office during the week, then there's no point posting loads of content in the daytime when they're working and they're not likely to be on social media. Yes. Um, whereas, say, if you're targeting uh, a mother, for example, you don't want to be targeting when she's doing the school run or she's trying to cook dinner or something because she's probably not going to be looking at social media. So you have to think of your target audience and when they're most likely to be free and available to look at social media and be on it. Um, and that's really the answer. There's no right and wrong answer. But what you can do is when you first start out, because you still might not know exactly, you just have to test and it's trial and error. And as long as you've got business accounts set up on Instagram and Facebook, which you should be doing on Facebook anyway, because you shouldn't be posting your business off your personal profile. Um, but as long as you've got business accounts, you can see the analytics and it will tell you exactly when people are coming on at what time of day. So you'll be able to quickly work out the peak times 
and then obviously tailor your posts and post at those times. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, so before posting again, I think one more important thing is we need to find out the hashtags because that plays a really important role, isn't it? So how do we find out what hashtags work or what are the best hashtags and how many hashtags do I have to use? And these are the questions that might come into everybody's mind as well, isn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, hashtags is a big topic, it always is. Uh, yeah, no, it depends on the platform in terms of number and, and exactly what hashtags you um, use. And where uh, do just, we find the hashtags? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just explain that. So basically, um, on things like LinkedIn and Facebook, um, hashtags are quite new, actually, only for the last few years. Uh, so they don't have the number of followers and or posts that like Instagram or Twitter have, because they were... Twitter was originally the first platform to do hashtags. They sort of created them or like was connected with them. And then obviously when Instagram launched, they started doing it. But on, say, LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter, you should only be do, using about two or three hashtags maximum per post because they're not, they're not like Instagram. And I'll cover okay. that in a minute. Um, so normally you just need keywords that are connected with what you're posting. And it's as simple as that. Well, what you have to do is make sure that they are sort of key hashtags within those platforms. So you can't just randomly make them up. You actually need to go into those platforms and check because what's popular on LinkedIn may not be popular on Facebook because as Facebook is more of a consumer facing platform, people use different terminology and different hashtags are more popular. Whereas on LinkedIn, they tend to be more business related. So um, you won't have more of the, so many of the fun hashtags on there. So yeah. whatever you're doing, you need to actually check them out in each platform. And it's the same with Twitter. You just have to, there's no, there's no way around it. I mean, the only thing you either do it manually within the platforms or if you're paying for some specialist tools like scheduling tools, you may get that included in your package uh, where it will help you find hashtag relevant ones. But okay, but you have to do it manually, but yeah. Yeah. And then, Is there a um, place where we could find these hashtags which works for us or? Uh... Uh, you just basically have to just look up keywords related to your, um, and then it will just give you, if you start typing the word like, um, Food vegan business, recipes. Yeah, it will just come up with loads of loads of words or similar words to do with food business. And like uh, generally, if you're only going to be picking two or three, just pick the biggest ones, similar ones, um, and then just pick two or three different words but relevant to your content. Okay. Um, and then obviously, when you're doing different posts, you can switch them around a bit and test out different ones. But unfortunately, there's no individual tracking as to which is the best hashtag for your post. It doesn't that doesn't really exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can get more sophisticated like feedback if you're paying for tools to monitor stuff, but in, in the actual platform itself, it won't tell you, unfortunately, whether it's worked or not for you. So the, on, the only um, exception on that to some degree, but not completely is Instagram. So Instagram's use is quite different in terms of hashtags because obviously in a, a main feed post, um, you can have up to 30. And that, that sounds like a lot to a lot of people. And there, there's a bit of a strategy behind how you should do that. And basically, when you're doing Instagram, it's not just randomly finding 30 like hashtags. You should have um, about five to seven, which are what I call like keywords related to your industry or your sector. So quite top line. I recommend going between 100,000 and a million like posts. You can't you can obviously go over a million. But the problem with that is it tends to be the big brands and the big influencers that dominate those. And you'll just get lost if you're a small business. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not really worth like using those uh, until you get more established. So I recommend um, trying to find hashtags with up to um, a million for that. So do five to seven of those. Then look at five to seven that are more like niche or product specific to what you do. So for example, if you're doing vegan ready meals or something like that, you know, it's more specific. Um, so it's more it's more niche down or so and again the the following numbers will probably be under a hundred thousand because it's more uh -huh. niche or you could be two or three words that describe what you're doing um and then again you want about five to seven of these and then after that you should be having like one or two related to your brand so that could be your brand name or your business name um if you're um running a promotion or a competition you might be using a hashtag that's specific to that so you could add that in as well and that's a really good point if anyone's running competitions. It's a really good way to, to monitor entries if you use a hashtag that's specific yeah. to competition. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other area in terms of hashtags, you can use five or more of these, are anything that gives context to what you're posting. So that could be, a, if relevant, like the location. It could be one of these national days that people support. It could be a special occasion, you know, like a birthday or anniversary or Easter, or, you know, anything like that. Um, or it could be something that, you know, like things like, thank God it's Friday or something, you know, it could be something like that. There are hashtags of that type of nature on there. Yeah. So it sort of depends what you're posting, whether it's relevant to post something like that. Um, but, but I think that underpins everything is whatever you post that uses hashtags, they need to be relevant to your content. Don't of just course. use random, just because they're big, like they've got big numbers behind them because it won't help you. And actually, um, Instagram's quite clever. They analyze stuff. And if it doesn't fit with what your content is, it's not going to push it out. It will just like not help you. So yeah. it's better to be as relevant as possible when you're using hashtags. And yeah, I mean, I, I definitely recommend using 30 if you're able to do that. If you feel you're just starting out and you're struggling with the idea of doing 30, then start with like 15 or so. And you can build up over time, which is why I said like five to seven, I was doing five plus and things. Because I think if you're just starting out, you may not want to do that many. But yeah. I mean, there are tools to help you out there because obviously you can you can manually search the hashtags within Instagram. Um, but there are some free tools uh, that help you like where you can just um, find the hashtags within them. And then what you can do is save them. So you don't have to sit every time and find 30 new ones. You can like build up little um, you know, like groups of hashtags that you can use and then you can just adapt them slightly, especially kind of. if you've got similar type of topics and posts over time. Um, then you can just adapt maybe the odd words, um, you know, if it's a seasonal variation or something like that. Okay, yeah. I think that's what we do as well because we've got for these different kind of posts, we've got this group of hashtags, like, uh, you know, recipe posts, we've got few and Jack and Chill is something hashtag which we use for everything as uh, you rightly yeah. said. Yeah, and yeah. do you think this Instagram analytics has changed recently? Because this kind of a personal question for me as well, because I noticed that, uh, you know, our engagement was quite high earlier, I would say, maybe last year and from, yeah, last few months, it has gone really down. So I'm trying to wonder, is it the following that has uh, gone down? Or is it why the engagement rate has gone down? Or is it the hashtags? So that's still I'm trying to figure out what many people told me the, the analytics has gone a bit, uh, you know, yeah, strange. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean it's interesting. They're they're playing with the the algorithms all the time on these platforms, unfortunately. Um, I mean, there was a, there's a few things. If you're talking back from like about a year ago, um, they did um, in terms of hashtags, they did um, stop all hashtags uh, during the American election last year. So if you had them, they just weren't working. So you'll probably find you your posts um, really like the reach declined on them in, during that period because it was happening to everybody because they oh. just and all of them I think because they were worried about you know things like fixing votes and all that sort of stuff so they just stopped them all um because obviously they um the social media platforms got accused of rigging votes in, in previous uh, elections so I think they just did yeah. that to um cover themselves if you like um but uh you know aside from that there's also been a lot of change in the algorithm and the algorithm now at the moment favors anything to do with reels so I don't know if you've used reels yes and yeah. it favors um lives particularly uh, and then after that they love anything to do with stories and and any video generally so basically if you're doing like normal posts where you're just doing a photo um they get the least um engagement and mm -hmm. ranking in the algorithm so if you can you need to really try and push to do the other things I, I and I appreciate they are a lot more work than just still photos yeah uh, but that's that's what and, and I think it's because that's what they want to be known for and things like reels they're competing with TikTok and things so that's why they're doing it because they want people to stay on Instagram and not go to TikTok because there's been yeah. a lot of talk about TikTok and whether yeah. it should be going on there more of video content definitely because even yeah. we have started doing uh, lives and uh, you know more of stories and because that's what we heard as well reels is definitely they're trying to push a lot so more yeah. of video content um, for sure um, just before we wrap up, do you recommend having a social media manager for a small business, like having a dedicated person to manage their social media? Well, I mean, it sort of depends um, on your like time and, and if you've got budget to do it, because obviously it will cost you to like uh, employ someone. Now, I mean, you don't have to have someone full time and you can obviously use like a freelancer or you could go to an agency and get someone to do it for you. But I think it depends 
like whether you've got the capacity to do it yourself or if you're a mm. small team then maybe you've got someone within your team that could do it for you but I think what's what I would say definitely is um, if you are going to employ something make sure they're at the right level because a lot of people what I find when they're first starting out they just employ a junior person because they think oh um, 18 year old or 20 year olds um, they're on social media all the time so they can just do all the posting because they know how to post but the problem is they don't have a business background they don't have any strategy behind how a business should do social media so they're great for actually just posting but I think if you are going to go down that route and employ like an intern or a junior person then always get a, a consultant or someone to um, help you with the, writing a social media strategy so then yeah. you've got something that they can follow to execute that's that's been agreed with you as the founder if you like um, but obviously, if you have a more experienced um, social media manager doing work for you, then they will be able to do that as part of their job. So it sort of depends, like, really on your budgets and what you're trying to achieve out of it, really. Um, so there's different ways of doing it. Um, but um, Yeah, yeah. I think for me, for Jack and Chill, for my other brand, I've never had any social media person because I'm not very active on social media. But for uh, Jack and Chill, what I did was from day one, I thought I have to have a social media manager because... For me, I didn't have the patience of sitting down and creating the content and then, you know, scheduling the, the post and everything. So uh, I thought that's something which I really wanted to delegate it to somebody because that really takes a lot of time. So may as well you brainstorm with them, but creating all that and posting was uh, too time consuming for me. So I think it depends on, like you said, depends on your budget and your comfort zone. Like if you really like doing it, you may as well do it as well. So do you, on that scheduling note, do you recommend any scheduling, uh, you know, apps or uh, platforms? Yeah, yeah. So the ones I recommend uh, for Instagram are either Later or Planoly because they're specifically designed for Instagram. And the reason I say that is they're, um, they, when you look at them, they, they actually show like your grid, like your Instagram grid so that you can actually plan out the photos or the videos that you're going to put on them. So you can make sure it looks nice because obviously Instagram is all about the aesthetics and what things look like. You know, that's not an issue on things like Facebook and LinkedIn because you're not looking at everything in one go as your posts. So if you're wanting to use um, schedule on Facebook, I would just um, schedule within the platform. It's very easy to do. Um, but saying that though, if you want to have one scheduler for like everything, then um, then you can use things like Hootsuite or Buffer um, where you can post to all the platforms. The only problem with things like um, Instagram is it's not so great on the visual side of it because it's not really geared for that. It's more geared for the Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook type platforms. Um, but you know, a lot of people do that. And, and then there are some other ones that, because all of those ones have a free plan and then there's paid ones if you, you want to post more often and, and you want to, the extra features like posting videos or scheduling videos and things like that. But they all, for the basic posts, you can do them all free on those. Okay. But there are some paid ones where um, they offer a lot more. I think you can do it on all of the platforms, but um, there's no free option. Things like Content Cal is one um, that you can do that. But um, uh, yeah, they, they don't have a free version on that. So it sort of depends on your budget really and, and whether you want everything in one place or whether you want specialist um, scheduling tools for different platforms. And yeah, for example, another platform we didn't even talk about um, was Pinterest. And there's a specialist scheduling tool for that called Tailwind. Um, so if you're going to go on that one, I would use that one because it's especially geared up for like the pinning process, which is all about Pinterest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, never knew Pinterest had a scheduling platform as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's one. I mean, I, I, there possibly are some others that allow you to now, but that one is the original one that was designed to work with Pinterest. So it's oh. really good um, if you want to post on Pinterest and do scheduling on Pinterest. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a quick wrap up of, you know, many of the questions which we wanted to be answered, uh, Sasha. So thanks very much for your time today. And uh, thank you very much for, uh, you know, all, all the advice and uh, from your experience as well of running social media. I think it is really, really helpful. So, uh, yeah. So I'll see you guys in my uh, next video. And then until then, take care.